Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. If you like the kinds of things I talk about in these episodes each week, check out our basic course at michaelneal.org forward slash basic course, and you'll get a, a much kind of a deeper understanding of what's behind the, the different things I talk about week to week. But today what I want to talk about stemmed from a conversation I was having with a friend, and, and I was in a bit of a low, low, low mood, and I was... I was kind of complaining about myself and, you know, saying – I was talking crap about myself. And, and, and they said to me, I don't think that's even your thought. And I, I was like, what, what do you mean? And they said, well, you, you know, you always say that. You always kind of talk about, oh, you're a worthless piece of crap. And blah, blah, blah. But I don't think that's your thought. I think – Somebody must have said something like that to you one day and you kind of like adopted it and took it on and raised it as your own thought. And now it feels like it's yours, but it was, I don't think it ever came from you in the first place. And I laughed because it was a funny idea and, and I didn't think much of it. But then over the next couple of hours and then over the next couple of days and then over the next couple of weeks, I started to notice how many of the thoughts that I had in my head weren't really mine. Now, they were mine in the sense that they were in my head, and I thought about them a lot. But they never came from me. It's not like I knew where specifically most of them came from. But I could spot the difference between a thought, something I really thought, and something that I kind of picked up somewhere along the way. And then it got really interesting. Because I started to, to think, well, if, if these thoughts aren't native to me, in other words, if they're not a part of my original thinking, they didn't come from that space within me, they, they, they you know, were made up by my brain based on data that collected over the course of my life, then what are my native thoughts? Like, what do I actually think? Not what I've picked up, not what I've learned, not what I've deduced and, and, and kind of went, well, I guess this is what I think. But which thoughts are actually yours? And which thoughts have you just picked up along the way? Now, I, I really encourage you to check this out for yourself because I've noticed some really interesting things in a relatively short amount of time. One of the things that I've seen is I cannot find a single negative thought about myself or about the world that came from me. Now, again, I'm not saying I don't have them. I'm not saying I haven't had some of them for a very long time. But when I notice the difference between what I actually think and what I have always just thought I think, None of the negativity comes from me. And I've run this with multiple people, and none of us can find any negative thoughts that really came from that deeper space within us. When we look at ourselves, when we look at the world from deep within, our, our, our thinking is remarkably simple. Like, I, I, I started playing around with it, and I would encourage you to. I started going, okay, well, you know, how many of my thoughts about business are mine, and how many of them have I learned along the way? I mean, I, 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 even, I, I even did golf, because I love playing golf, and I'm not very good at it, and I have a lot of thinking about it. And I, I went, okay, well, how many of my thoughts about golf are mine? And I, I sifted through all these thoughts about how you should play and, you know, what it means if you play well and what's wrong. And, and the only thought that I was left with that I could see were genuinely mine were I really like golf. It's really fun to hit the ball up in the air. <laughs> now, I understand. It's not a particularly deep thought. But it is my thought. And the, when I looked at business, I saw all the things that were learned thoughts. Oh, well, if, you're, if you want to be successful, you have to do this. And if you want to uh, market, th this is how you have to market. And if you want to sell, this is how you have to sell. And then I found in and amongst all that noise, 
I found a few thoughts that were just mine. And the interesting thing about the thoughts that were just mine is there was no difficulty in implementing them. There was no, oh, well, okay, well, if that's true, then I need to do this and this and this, and I need to change that and that and that. They, they, they came with their own kit. They came with their own implementation strategy. In fact, there wasn't even a, a lag between the thought and the action. Because generally speaking, as soon as the thought came, I was doing whatever the thought was. I explored it in the area of fear. If you think about what you think about when you're scaring yourself, when you're getting wound up, when you're afraid, how many of those thoughts are yours, like native to you? And how many of you picked up along the way and, and just adopted? I was, I was trying to explain this to a group earlier today, actually. And, and, and there's, a, there's a movie called The Pirates of Penzance. It was an operetta by Gilbert and Sullivan. And, and, and I always remember the scene where the, the pirate king is, is talking to the, the modern major general, if you know the song, the, the very model of a modern major general. And, and, and he comes across him, and, and the modern major general has bought this estate. And he's, he's sitting in a cemetery that was on the estate that he bought. And he's, he's weeping. And, the, and Frederick, the pirate king, says to him, well, uh, actually, Frederick's not the pirate king. Not the important part of the story. But Frederick says to him, what's wrong? And, and the, the general says, well, I'm, I'm mourning my ancestors. And Frederick looks around and goes, but didn't you just buy this cemetery as part of the estate? And the general says, yes. And he said, well, why do you call them your ancestors? And he said, well, I bought the estate and the, and the cemetery is on the estate. So if these aren't my ancestors, I'd like to know whose ancestors they are. And it's that same kind of weird ownership we take that it's like, because it's been living in our head rent-free, it must be our thought. But what if it never was? And what if you don't have to think any thought that isn't yours? How much more freedom would you have? How different would your life look? How much simpler would things start to be? And I really can't encourage you enough to just sit with it, play with it, and see what you see. Have fun, learn heaps, happy exploring, and I'll talk with you soon.